Hi everyone, I am Richard Walton and you are in the TESOL Rich English YouTube channel. Thank you for coming in. This is a uh, quick video. It's the third in a video series I've done on describing trends in graphs and charts. This particular video is the third and it's all about pie charts. There are many, many videos about charts on YouTube, but uh, this is just my version. And if you are a businessman who are using these charts in presentations, this may give you some tips and expressions to help make your presentation more interesting. Okay, and also students who are studying for Cambridge BEC business exams or IELTS or other exams with business content you will find this interesting because in the writing and speaking part often they have a pie chart. So keep watching and I hope you really enjoy the video. I'm going to start with some graphics so we're going to go into split screen and this is just an introduction to what is a pie chart, why do we use it, is it a current chart to use or is it rather old-fashioned as we say. This is where it comes from. Here on your right or left, I don't know where it will be, is an apple pie. So you do already know this word if you have ever been to England and eaten one of these delicious apple pies. But the pie chart takes its shape from the apple pie, the classic circle. So this here on the right is an image of a classic pie chart. But you may ask, is it really current in 2015? Because that's where we are now and there are much more interesting graphs. I will be doing a video on bubble graphs and others which are slightly more modern ways of presenting data. But here we are with our old pie chart. Is it current? I think it is. And the reason I think it's current is it's a very good snapshot of a situation when you want to show something visually. That is, all graphics can tell a story very, very quickly rather than looking at the numbers and looking at the percentages. For example, YouTube, they still use pie charts for their analytics section where you can go and see a snapshot of what is happening on the channel. On my channel this is a snapshot of how many female or male users are using my channel. So percentage share of the total is what you're going to be saying mostly when you are describing these types of charts. Right, now to read a pie chart using the visual impact of the graphic you need something very important. To be able to read it correctly, you need a legend or a key. Now this key, which you're seeing here now, is giving you the information of what each colour, if you're using colours, you could be using some other type of shaded area or whatever, to give the visual impact of the percentage of the total share. Now, the key will describe each colour with what you're talking about. So in the example here, you're seeing six months of the year, from April to September. And again, I'm using the word a snapshot of what's happening in those months. Obviously, you need the context of the graph. This could be sales of a product in the six-month period. It could be now, here's another important word, I think, when you are talking about business or were you talking about market share in a pie chart, uh, here's a word segments. And as with the apple pie, the word segment is a word you will see in another collocation and this could be with a fruit. Now I've chosen a grapefruit in this graphic because it's a classic, grapefruit segments. Now segment, which is a noun, um, can be transformed into a, another noun, which is segmentation. And this is really a topic for another video, which I will be doing later. Right, now I want to get into some detail about comparing data 
using the pie chart as the basis of your comparison. And this will happen when you want to compare, for example, three years, how the market share is changing over that period, or has changed over that period. So I'm going to, so I'm going to use this graphic here as a base, then to illustrate what language, what verbs, what nouns, what adjectives and prepositions you need to know when you're speaking or writing. So the example here is a classic. Somebody produces or sells different products and they want to know and they want to demonstrate which products are selling the most and how big a share of their total sales do they occupy. Then they want to compare over a period of time how the things are changing. That is, how the trends are changing, how the market share is changing in each of the products which are illustrated in the graph. Okay, let's start with the opening statement. To describe the sales trend of this three-year period, we need to look at the significant shift in demand for certain product categories. Notice the colored words here, these are key words. In a business presentation, they make your presentation more interesting. If you are doing an IELTS exam or something similar, then the examiners really like a variety of language and vocabulary. Here I've emphasized significant, which is an adjective for emphasis, and shift, which implies movement or change. For example, the toy segment or category counted for over one half of total sales in 2012, but lost just over 20% share the following year dropping dramatically to just 10% of total by the end of 2014. Now it's very important to use these wonderful connecting words or phrases. In this sentence, the connecting phrase is, for example. Now these help you link your ideas, make your comparisons, in your description if you are speaking or writing. Now in this sentence, uh, note that I use the expression over one half instead of saying 60%, just to change the language, and a couple of good decreasing trend verbs, to lose and to drop, and to finish off a nice emphasis adverb dramatically. Now we are comparing, so here's another statement. On the contrary, we can see in the same period, sales of computer games jump from a mere 10% to an impressive 41% share. That is, doubling each year its proportion of overall turnover. Okay, a quick look at the language here. The first is an obvious linking phrase when you are comparing on the contrary. Then we have two verbs in red, to jump and to double. The second is in the durand form, doubling each year, meaning it's 100% increase. So these are two of many verbs we can use to describe an increasing trend. I've underlined Another linking device here, that is, this is a great way of illustrating or adding information to something which has been said in the previous part of a sentence. And the final point in this sentence, I've changed the vocabulary. I've used proportion as a synonym for percentage and an expression overall turnover to mean total sales. Okay, let's move to another point. In contrast, the music CD category was stable through 2012-2013, but in 2014, its total share fell sharply to almost half of the previous two years, reaching a low of just 7%. 
This decline is probably due to the increasing trend of downloading music via iTunes and others. Make a note again of the words I've coloured and underlined. These are again a selection of verbs or adverbs which make this description more varied and interesting. Here's my next point in this description. Turning to another important trend, we see a marked increase in the percentage share of tablet sales. A notable increase from 8% to 34% is impressive, although it should be expected with the ongoing boom in this market segment. A few language points here. Turning to is a very nice linking device to change your point or change to a different subject. And a couple of noun phrases here to indicate uh, an increase in this particular category. Marked increase. Marked is an adjective which you can use to emphasize this increase. And another one, notable. Another great adjective to give effect or emphasis. And a quick grammar note at the bottom here. The category is tablets in the plural noun form, but when we are describing this and using it as an adjective, it's usually going to be in the singular. So it becomes tablet sales, not tablets sales. Okay, we have almost arrived with the final category. The final category of other will include a number of products that individually hold an insignificant share, so they are grouped in one segment, completing the sales total in percentage terms. In the three-year period, there was little change apart from a dip in 2013 to 5%, but returning to its former 8% share in 2014. Just one or two vocabulary points here. Insignificant. It's a great adjective to say there was no impact. And here in the final sentence, there was little change. I've made a few notes in the description just to revise the meaning when you add the article a little instead of just the adjective as here little. It does change the meaning, so you need to know the difference. And the last point here, dip. Now, to dip is a verb. A dip, obviously a noun. This is a really nice word to describe a very, very small decrease or fall, usually temporarily. Okay, to finish off, in conclusion, we can note a changing sales scenario, as demonstrated by this retail's numbers, reflecting general consumer buying habits in retail, leisure, toys and entertainment. These fast-moving habits can change with every new fashionable product, such as tablets and computer games, that inevitably take market share from more traditional categories like toys. So the vocabulary here is quite, I think, obvious. In conclusion is a great final connecting phrase and a few verbs here to be demonstrated by and to reflect are really good verbs. Fast moving, that is a compound adjective, so you can see it's hyphenated. And the last word here, colored green, inevitably. I think it's a great adverb to describe something which is almost certain to happen. So that's it for this video. Hope it was useful. Good luck in your next presentation. Good luck in your exam, if you're taking an exam. And please subscribe, share, comment on the video. You can ask any questions in the discussion part if you want different types of videos. Please don't hesitate to ask and I hope to see you in the channel again in another video. Goodbye from me.